Hello everyone, this is Mr. Caviani, and by the end of this video, you should be able to calculate the change in momentum of an object experiencing an external force, and relate the change in momentum or impulse of an object to the force exerted on it and the time the force acts for. The guiding question for this series of videos is how do these objects help keep us safe? We can look at a foam pit that gymnasts use to practice in. We can look at a football helmet, which protects football players' heads from collisions. We can look at a car, and in the front of a car, there's an area known as a crumple zone. In other words, it's a piece of metal that's meant to crumple in the case of a head-on collision. And we can look at airbags in cars that help keep us safe in the event of a car crash. How do all of these, while different objects work on the same principle to help keep our bodies safe in various activities. That's going to be the guiding question and focus that these series of videos will attempt to answer. To begin our exploration, I'd like you to imagine that you're about to drop an egg on hard tile and you're also going to drop an egg on a 3.65 centimeter thick piece of foam. Now, which egg do you think will survive and why? This question may sound obvious, but the real answer as to why one egg will survive and one egg may not may be more complex than you realize at first. Take a second, make a prediction, and in a moment, we'll see what happens when we drop both eggs in real time. All right, let's take a look and see what happens when we release both eggs from rest. All right, so it looks like the egg on the left did not survive while the egg on the right did. And this is probably what you've guessed. Let's take a closer look and let's slow the video down so we can see what's happening a bit more easily. All right, let's take a look at the same egg drop, but this time we're gonna see it eight times more slowly than reality. All right, let's see if we can slow that down even more to notice what's going on here. All right, let's take a look at 80 times slower than real life. All right, so hopefully what you noticed as we slowed the video down even more is the egg on the left seems to come to an abrupt and immediate stop once it hits the tile. We can see right there that as soon as the egg on the left hits the tile, it cracks and stops moving. While the egg on the right, the moment it contacts the foam, we can see that it continues to move for a few frames before eventually coming to a nice gradual stop. If we slow the video down and count the number of frames, we can actually calculate the time difference that both of these eggs take to come to a stop. We can see here that the egg on the left stops and breaks after about one frame, while the egg on the right takes about two and a half frames to stop moving. Even though the egg on the right does seem to bounce back up, we know that for the egg to change directions, it must reach a velocity of zero at some point. And so we're only considering the point when both eggs reach that velocity of zero. Uh, we can convert these frames into times like so. Given that the video was framed at 240 frames per second, it looks to see that the egg on the right stops in about 10.42 milliseconds, while the egg on the left stops more abruptly with 4.16 milliseconds of time to stop. So this difference in the amount of time the eggs take to reach a velocity of zero seem to have a significant impact on the force the egg experiences during the collision and therefore whether the egg breaks or not. Now, interesting, we know that both eggs have the same initial velocity and the same mass, so we know they have the same initial momentum. Now, after the eggs both stop moving or both reach a velocity of zero, they also have a momentum of zero. And so if both eggs 
had the same change in their momentum, they both reached zero from the same initial velocity. Why did one egg survive and one egg break? Right? We need to understand more than just momentum to be able to explain that. And so on the next slide, we're going to take a look at the relationship between momentum, force, and time. Before we do, take a moment and write down any observations or notes you have from the video before moving on. 